thanks to a couple of people before we invite God to be present, um, to be center in everything that we do. I know for my life, he's definitely the head of it. Uh, I'd like to thank, first of all, the Family Network, which is the organization I work for that helps sponsor me coming back and forth to Harrisburg. I'd like to thank the AIU who facilitates the bus. Uh, we really appreciative of that and Dr. Clanker and all those that work with Allegheny uh, and with uh, AIU. And I would like to thank the Fatherhood Collaboration of Western Pennsylvania who've been on the grassroots level of pushing this effort forward and all of the surrounding counties that's come here today to honor fathers and families. This is about our children. This is not about a gender. This is not about uh, a department or an organization. This is for the betterment of everyone, as Dr. Lynch was saying. We win when our kids win. Father, we thank you. We honor you for being in this place with us. We thank you for safe travels. And as we stand here in the place called government, all authority is in your hands. And so turn the hearts of those that need to vote today. That we don't have to solicit, we don't have to urge or coerce, but God touch the hearts of those that can make this Bill 1731 a reality. We thank you for tenacity for the last seven plus years. But now, God, it is time to cross the goal line. And in that, we can celebrate for the future of our children, our children's children, and our children's children. The Bible says that a man is blessed in the fourth generation. And so, Father, bless the Father movement. Bless everybody that's here today. And thank you for being present in our lives. I pray these words in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, George. And now I would like to introduce our presiding official, uh, the Reverend, the Honorable Reverend Dr. W. Wilson Good, Sr., Chair Emeritus of the Pennsylvania Symposium Organizing Committee, and the former mayor of the city of Philadelphia, Dr. Good. Well, you're <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all so much for coming and being here and being a part of this press conference. Uh, we want to just say how much we appreciate y'all traveling long distances to be here. And just wanted to say good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and before we get started, I would like to acknowledge David A. Wire, current chair of the SOC, who could not be with us today due to personal accomplishments. Please give keep him and his family in your prayers. Let's just pause for a moment of silence just to uh, recognize him. Thank you. Amen. It's been my pleasure to be a part of this movement and to chair it over the last five years. In 2014, a group of Philadelphia came together to form as an independent corporation known as the Strong Family Commission with a mission to serve as an advocate for strengthening families and improving development outcomes for children from promising greater father, family involvement in the lives of both children and families, an intentional transformation of social service agencies and other systems of care willing to adopt and institutionalize a father-inclusive posture towards man within families. I mean, let me just say that again. To adopt a institutionalized, a father-inclusive posture towards man within families. Father-inclusive posture 
toward man with that kind. In 2016, we decided that the work we had in Philadelphia needed to be elevated to statewide as the issue transcended Pennsylvania County. Thus, the Pennsylvania Symposium Organizing Committee, the SOC as we call it, was established to bring to light something that had been in the dark too long. That is, the county's absence of non-involvement of too many fathers in the care of their children, of too many fathers in the care of their children and families, and to shine a spotlight on resulting consequences. By 2017, we hosted the first of six annual statewide conferences that address child well-being in Pennsylvania and the urgent need for father involvement, for father involvement in the lives of their children. In 2020, we successfully set up the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services Bureau of Child Support to establish internally a child and family advocate. Big Star, to establish internally a child and family advocate advisory board to assist the Bureau in its transformation towards being more family inclusive in its service delivery model. Now we gather here together in 2022 at the Church of Pennsylvania once again making historic achievements. We thank the members of the General Assembly for their foresight and courage to make father inclusion a substantial component of the work that is to be done for the children and family in our state. As we leave this first time, we must never forget that many lessons learned along the way, for example, how to build a statewide network of strangers into a vast development network of allies with a common mission to promote greater father involvement, how to sustain a change episode when there is no reliable source of funding to cover the expenses needed to provide the public at no charge in dealing with all of that. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I've learned in my life that what you have to do is keep pushing. That things don't work unless you just keep pushing. And all these people behind me and out there have been a part of a movement for the last five years that never gave up. And if we want to see further father involvement in our families, all of us have to keep pushing. And even though we're near the goal line, you know sometimes you have to take and push people over the goal line. I was watching a football game the other day and all of the big guys, uh, these big guys back here, they have to push us over the goal line. So, so I just want to say that it is my pleasure now uh, to introduce Dr. Joel N. Myers, campaign advocate and chair of the Pennsylvania Greater Family Involvement Campaign, is founder and chief executive officer of Agla Weather Incorporated. Thanks for a lovely day, Dr. Myers. Uh, an American media company that provides commercial weather forecasting services worldwide. Dr. Myers operates out of the state college in Pennsylvania. Then Dr. Lynch, who does not like the much said about him, at least while he's present, uh, who will give thanks to elected legislative leaders as sponsor of House Bill 1731 and has asked to be introduced simply as a father and a National Social Workers 
the social work by then. Uh, he's off that and more. So, Dr. Myers. We're gathered here together and we're all aligned in the same mission for the benefit of all the children of Pennsylvania who are growing up primarily in single households. As we know, there is great evidence that shows when both parents, mom and dad, are involved and engaged in their lives, their children are likely to have a much more successful and happier life. The statistics in this regard are overwhelming. In some cases, single fathers are less engaged in the lives of their children than we all would desire. But in the majority of cases, the current system prevents rather than encourages fathers to be actively engaged and involved with their children. The overall impact on the children and on our nation's social system is overwhelmingly negative. In fact, I have argued that this is the single biggest under-discussed crisis that exists in our society today. As a result of a campaign that we undertook nearly six years ago to begin the process of correcting this problem, now with the support of the state legislature, and hopefully with the establishment of the Advisory Commission, we may soon be empowered to recommend changes which will be of significant benefit to the children of this commonwealth. And this will be an important milestone in overall social progress. Since we last met here in this beautiful rotunda of the state capitol in 2019, we have had four statewide annual symposia attended by hundreds of engaged participants. We have met with Pennsylvania state legislators and select general assembly committee staff officials, as well as senior members of Governor Wolf's administration, all for the purpose of advancing our primary mission, which is establishing in statute the Pennsylvania Advisory Committee on Greater Father Involvement. We are grateful to State Senator Anthony Harder E. Williams, who was the primary sponsor of our bill in the last legislative session, as well as to State Representative Lori A. Mizgorski, who took the lead in the current session by introducing HB 1731 to create the Pennsylvania Advisory Committee on Greater Father Involvement in the House of Representatives in 2021. That bill received unanimous final passage from the House on May 23rd of this year and was forwarded to the Senate where it has been moved out of committee and is awaiting a final vote. We are now at the threshold of achieving our first major objective to better the future of the children of our great state by finally addressing the systematic biases that single or divorced fathers face and by doing so enabling our children's much-needed access to both of their parents during their precious formative years. Many of you have contributed to our progress in reaching this momentous point. I'm proud to have been joined by my esteemed colleague, Reverend Dr. W. Wilson Good Jr., the former mayor of Philadelphia, David A. Weiler, President and CEO of Delta Community Supports, Inc., and of course, Dr. Rufus Sylvester Lynch, the architect, organizer, and tireless champion of our campaign. Unfortunately, David is not able to be with us today, as you heard, but on behalf of all of us, I extend our sincerest gratitude for the dedication, the time, and the passion many of you who are here today have led to our worthy cause. We came together from diverse backgrounds, interests, and various parts of the state. Because of the overwhelming data and evidence that clearly shows the urgent need for greater involvement of fathers in the lives of the children of Pennsylvania. 
specifically the 2021 Annie Carey Foundation Kids Count Report shows that 35% of the children under the age of 18 in Pennsylvania live in a single parent household. 35%, that's more than one in three. And the vast majority of those live only with their mothers, usually with limited access to their dads. This crisis has existed for decades, but it's getting worse. Our state and federal government seems to have had absolutely no motivation to do what is needed to address this atrocity. And we could no longer stand by and watch as our family courts, county and human services systems routinely hinder or completely deny single family access to their families, to their children. We also know that according to the 2019 study of contested custody cases selected at random in 14 counties in central Pennsylvania conducted by the Dad's Resource Center, judges awarded custody time on average 69% to moms, 31% to dads. Of these 700 cases, mothers received either full or primary custody in 71% of cases, while fathers received full or primary custody in only 14%. That's a 5 to 1 ratio. And these are cases where it was contested cases, where fathers went into court and spent thousands of dollars, in some cases tens of thousands of dollars. But actually the situation is far worse than that because these statistics show the cases that went to court. Most attorneys being aware of the likely outcomes often caution fathers not to waste money and time going against the system and urge dads to settle for less custody time than they really want or deserve. This results in children being unnecessarily deprived of the needed guidance and love of their dads. Through well over 150 contacts with single fathers we have had since the founding of the Dad's Resource Center, we've seen an extreme disconnect between how people want and would expect our family courts to operate and how in fact they do. What we have seen is an unfair and biased system that enables and encourages conflict between separated parents. Even worse, the children are often exposed to persistent tensions, uncertainty, and being part of the middle of conflicts between parents. Shouldn't government agencies be doing just the opposite? Because of this overwhelming effort, the Dad's Resource Center decided to survey the citizens of Pennsylvania to find out how they believe our family courts should operate. So in partnership with the National Parents Organization, the Dad's Resource Center very recently commissioned and paid for an independent poll of the attitudes of Pennsylvanians regarding shared parenting when parents live apart. We are announcing the results of this important uh, study for the first time here today, and they are truly extraordinary. 97% of the respondents to this poll, 97% believe that children with separated parents should have equal access to both parents. 97% of Pennsylvanians believe that. 94% believe that it would benefit society if more children from separated households have both parents significantly involved in their lives, 94%. Wouldn't you get a poll that, that convinced you it almost never happened? 65% of the people surveyed, nearly two-thirds, believe that family, family courts are more likely to treat mothers preferentially. Of course, this is not fair. And in fact, it is well known and opposed by the overwhelming majority of the citizens of Pennsylvania. So there's a huge disconnect between what the people of Pennsylvania want and believe is right and what the courts and state agencies are doing. 28% believe that the courts are more likely to treat both parents equally. Only 7% believe they're more likely to treat fathers preferentially. 
91% of Pennsylvanians, Pennsylvania survey believe Pennsylvania law should be changed. 91% believe the law should be changed to make it easier for fit and willing fathers to gain parental rights and more parenting time with their children. 91% of Pennsylvanians believe that. This is what we've been campaigning for. And clearly the citizens of Pennsylvania overwhelmingly agree and believe that children in separated families need and should have the active involvement of both parents while growing up. Clearly, they also believe this is not what's happening now. And sadly, this is only one example of the systematic biases that result in children being denied access to their fathers. Let's look at a few others. We know that the staff makeup in the Office of Children and Youth in Pennsylvania, as surveyed by the Dad's Resource Center in 2019, is not balanced. 82% of the staff are female, 18% are male. The ratio of supervisors, 84% female, 16% male. There's a lot of talk about inclusion and engagement of fathers and services, but how can that be possible with this kind of gender discrepancy? Furthermore, we found that there was insufficient record keeping and oversight at the county level regarding the issuance of protection from abuse orders, as well as the lack of standards and reporting for guardian ad litems, both of which often impact fathers' capacity to be active in the lives of their children. Nobody ever surveyed these things, and no reporting of this until the Dad's Resource Center went out point by point and gathered this information. But these facts are indicative of how our institutions add to the deterioration of father-family involvement. These are the reasons we are here today. We know that according to a 2016 staff study by the Joint State Government Commission, quote, it is frequently alleged anecdotally that false claims of domestic violence are filed and PFA orders obtained as a tactic in divorce custody proceedings, end of quote. When the Dad's Resource Center reached out to the district attorneys in each county across the state about this topic, Many of them were candid in telling us that both during their time in private practice and during their time in office, they have each seen PFAs misused for this purpose. This is not right. By these methods and in so many other ways, those governmental systems and structures that were initially developed to protect the safety and well-being of our most vulnerable uh, of the children during a time in a life when they're most vulnerable they far too often, far too often, in fact, do immeasurably harm by needlessly preventing fathers from being part of their children's lives. This despite statistics that show that children are less likely to be exposed to abuse or neglect when they live with or have their fathers actively involved in their upbringing. This bears repeating. Children most need their father's attention and care when they are vulnerable or at risk, but our family courts and county and human services systems routinely put children at greater risk by needlessly cutting their fathers out of their lives. This has to stop. Furthermore, research shows that father absence plays a significant role in nearly every social issue that this country faces, including infant mortality, child abuse and neglect, obesity, being sexually active under the age of 18, teen pregnancy, smoking, alcohol and substance abuse, crime and imprisonment, emotional and mental health, suicide, poor school performance, high school dropouts and lack of post-secondary education, low income earnings, and reliance on welfare and other social support, and lack of civic engagement. Every one of them, the statistics are overwhelming. Father engagement reduces those problems. And these statistics are incredibly damning. Every social ill is intensified and increased by these barriers to father involvement. Every social ill in our society. 
That is why I say that this is society's greatest challenge, and we must come together here and now to deal with this problem. When fathers are actively involved in the lives of their children, we know that they tend to be happier and safer. Our country is healthier and more productive also. Yet, instead of celebrating fatherhood and looking for ways to ensure father involvement, our government pours hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars each year into public assistance and social services, which in many cases are doing just the opposite. We need to get this correct. We can do much more for our children and our society by transforming our culture and our courts, county and human service systems, so that they begin to truly value fathers and to treat fathers with the same deference that they treat mothers. This is what our children need to have in order to have the best chance of being successful in life. Importantly, now more than ever, it would also better serve the mothers who, by and large, want the best for their children. Also, society has greatly changed over the past several decades, major changes. It's increasingly uncommon to have a stay-at-home mother, whether a family is separated or not. According to the American Association of University Women's Association, the labor force participation rate of single, widowed, or divorced mothers with children under the age of 18 is 72 percent. Nearly three quarters of mothers with kids under the age of 18 are working. For the practical aspect of assisting with their care, getting them to and from their activities, and helping them deal with the extraordinary pressures that they face in a modern world, parenting is a two-person job. In our internet and social media age, children face extraordinary and unprecedented pressures. They're constantly bombarded by outside negative influences, with the high cost for post-secondary education, and our rapidly changing job market, which is only going to accelerate, or making it tough for them to plan for their future. It is simply too much of a job for one parent to handle. Whether they are living together or not, our children desperately need both mom and dad working together on their behalf. As a partner in raising their children, fathers can and should provide vital support and relief for mothers. According to the National Fatherhood Initiative, when fathers are actively involved in raising their children, mothers benefit <coughs> by being more likely to receive prenatal care being less likely to smoke during pregnancy, having healthier births, having lower risk of postpartum depression. It is in everyone's interest to solve this problem. The best thing we can do to support mothers is to ensure father and father. We live in a time of great social change. It's happening all around us. And there's been external, ex incredible external pressure and governmental directives aimed at guaranteeing that our minorities and our protected classes are treated the same as others. Yet still today, fathers are treated as an afterthought or worse by our courts, county and human services agencies every term. Clearly fathers do not yet have equal protection under the law. That needs to change as soon as possible. By their very nature, governmental institutions rarely inwardly reflect in a manner that leads them to voluntarily change how they do things. Pennsylvania has 67 counties with hundreds of family court judges, thousands of attorneys practicing family law, thousands of county and service providers, and tens of thousands of staff working in those agencies. Even prior to the pandemic, these systems and the people in them were overworked and burdened by incredibly complex and challenging situations, as well as ever-increasing bureaucratic paperwork and procedures. While most of the people who do this work do it with a good spirit and intention, many are just trying to keep their heads above water and do not have the capacity to change how these systems operate. 
without directives and guidelines that ensure that fathers are treated equally, the biases and the barriers they face will continue. That is why we set our course to involve the General Assembly to pass HB 1731, which would establish the Pennsylvania Advisory Committee on Greater Father Involvement. By passing this bill and having assigned it to law, our elected officials will codify that, quote, the public policy of the Commonwealth is to end institutional barriers that may impede fathers in some fostering supportive connections with their children, establish support mechanisms to enhance the ability of fathers to assume a beneficial parenting role, and assist men in preparing for the legal, financial, and emotional responsibility of father. End of quote. This will be an important step for our entire country. To my knowledge, no other state will have officially acknowledged the existence of institutional biases and barriers that impede fathers' ability to be in the lives of their children, much less mandate action to eliminate those barriers. This legislation will be positive and truly groundbreaking which is why other states and national organizations are carefully watching what we do here. It's been extremely validating over the last five months as every vote that has occurred in both House and Senate has been unanimous in favor of advancing this important bill. Many of our elected officials have been personally touched by situations <coughs> where good fathers are denied access to their children. And many of them have had constituents come to them desperately pleading for their help in breaking through these barriers. In a political climate that we live in today, when all sides agree on so little, to have this kind of support between men and women, between those in urban areas and those in rural areas, between Democrats and Republicans as we do here, we know our cause is just. It's important to publicly commend Speaker Brian Cutler and Senate Pro Tem Jake Corman for the dedication, wisdom, and leadership they have displayed throughout this process. I met with Jake Corman before I started the Dad's Resource Center seven years ago and told him what I was about to do, and he's been a supporter all the way along. This has been a terrific example of how government can and should work, and we're grateful for all of you and all, all of you in this movement have done to this point. Please know we're eager to, eager to join with you to finish the job now and get this essential bill to the governor's desk by the end of this legislative session. While we're here today to celebrate the incredible progress we've made, we must keep in mind that this will only be the first big step. Once the Advisory Committee on Greater Father Involvement is established, it will take, it will, once it's established, I'm sorry, it will make recommendations regarding the possible establishment of a long-term or permanent fathering commission, as well as defining its powers, duties, and funding. It will also submit a report to the Governor and General Assembly, making recommendations to aid in understanding, evaluating, and involving implementation of programs by December of next year, December 2023. As hard as we've worked to get HB 1731 passed into law, we need to follow this up to ensure proper implementation by the advisory committee so that it truly meets the needs of the children of Pennsylvania. To this point, our campaign has benefited from the broad approval of most Pennsylvanians. The closer we come to challenging some of the status quo and invoking proof system change, the more will need to be active and have continued active involvement of the citizens of the state to keep our momentum going. I have no doubt we will. Father absence is one of the greatest, most ignored crises that our country faces today. Because of our vision and efforts, Pennsylvania is on the brink of historic and positive action to ensure that all able and willing fathers are given the opportunity to play their sacred role 
in their children's lives. Today, we are asking Pennsylvanians to join us in our effort to transform Pennsylvania into America's most father-friendly state. Together, we will be doing great work for our children, as well as our moms and families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Myers. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rufus Lynch, and I have a few comments to make because we're at the end of the process. But there are a couple things that I wanted to say specifically uh, as a way of adding my thank you to the experience that we've had in this legislative process. As both doctors, Good and Myers, have already thanked the members of the General Assembly for their embracement of House Bill 1731, I now have the challenge task of giving personal thanks to a select group of legislative leaders who took on the role of advancing, of advocating rather, for a bill which would be codified in law. And that is the public policy of the Commonwealth to end institutional barriers that may impede fathers in fostering supportive connections with their children. There are so many who deserve a special shout out, including the chairs and vice chairs, as well as the hardworking committee members of the following legislative committees. Children and youth in the House of Representatives, Aging in you in the Pennsylvania State Senate, and the Appropriations Committee committee in each of the chambers of the General Assembly. All who have made a special contribution to our efforts to date cannot be recognized this morning because of time limitations. However, be assured, all will be individually acknowledged before the end of the current legislative session, which ends November 30th of this year. My task this morning is to give special thanks to the following. First and foremost, State Senator Anthony Hardy Benz, who in 2019 not only welcomed the idea of establishing a Pennsylvania Commission for Greater Father Family Involvement, but encouraged his legislative director to give technical support where needed in thinking through the mechanics of how to frame the purpose of the bill, which he then agreed to introduce in the State Senate as Senate Bill 476. Because the work of the SOC, that is the Pennsylvania Symposium Organizing Committee, has always been bipartisan and bicameral in nature. I had the task in 2020 of seeking a like-minded sponsor of Senate Bill 476 and the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Many thought such a task before the end of 2019 to 2020 the legislative session was impossible. However, as God would have it, I was fortunate and honored to meet Representative Lori A. Mogorski, a woman who understood exactly what SOC was attempting to do and embraced the concept as she too was concerned with the welfare of our country, the forward movement of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and its children, families, and communities. Thus, in 2020, what some thought could not happen, would not happen, Representative Mikorski introduced in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, House Bill 2872, which most of us have forgotten about. Unfortunately, time had run out before either bill was released from their respective committees. As a new session of the General Assembly began in January 2021, we all agreed, including Senator Williams, 
that Representative Wagorski would take the lead in sponsoring House Bill 1731, which is why we're all here today. We, the SOP, the Pennsylvania Great Father Family Involvement Campaign, known as, I can't think of the name, but I didn't write it down, uh, the Strong Families Commission Incorporated. Thank her for her courage, conviction, and perseverance during the establishment of an advisory committee on Great Father Involvement. As I have read remarks, we, meaning the citizens of the Commonwealth, including those of you who are here, must never forget that when we think about the legislative process, we must think of it through a quadruple lens. Meaning, one, the citizens who want to make change, which is the most important component. Two, the members of a legislative body themselves who get to vote ideas up or down regarding the change. Three, the sponsors and co-sponsors of, of ideas who are willing to advocate and defend the introduction of the idea. And last but not least, the caretakers of the legislative system itself. Regarding 1731, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania could not have had better, thoughtful, and visionary leaders who support the desire of every citizen to champion a statutory statewide entity to promote greater father, family, and father in the life of children, families, and communities. Thus ensuring the further well-being of the Commonwealth itself. In that regard, let's all give a hand to House Speaker Brian D. Cutler and President Pro Tem Jacob Goldman. Significant and important, and sometimes they are prophetic. 